in Ron Resurrection and uh, Miss Mimi Santos nandito na pala. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for coming uh, Doc Ron and for the ano uh, the message uh, that you're going to deliver this morning. Welcome uh, Miss Mimi Santos. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge also the uh, presence of uh, the literature department uh, chair, uh, Ms. Jen Aseno, Dr. Jen Aseno. Good morning.
Uh, good morning, everyone. Nadidinig po ba ako? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, uh, good morning po, everyone. Uh, let us begin. So, though the COVID-19 crisis has, sever has severely impacted the artistic community, the spirit of human connection and upliftment through arts remains stronger than ever. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Curation in Art in Art in Curation webinar. This is the 14th Arts Congress of the De La Salle University, Manila, with the theme Pandemic, Resilience, and the Arts. My name is Joshua Felicilda from the Filipino Department, and I am your host for this event. This year's DLSU Arts Congress is brought to you by the Office of the Vice Chancellor for Research and Innovation, the Office of the Assistant Dean for Research and Advanced Studies of the College of Liberal Arts, the La Salle University's The Museum, and Culture and Arts Office. in cooperation with the CLA Graduate Student Council. To enjoy this virtual event, here are some reminders. Here are some reminders for all of our Zoom participants. Firstly, uh, video cameras and microphones are disabled to avoid uh, accidentally interrupting the session. The chat option is also disabled so for your questions, kindly use our Slido link, which you can access by scanning the QR code or entering the pin you are seeing on your screens. Ito po ang Slido link natin. So you can enter this, ano, just, just enter slido.com and then enter the code that is shown. So it is uh, hashtag 36496. So ito po ang magiging itsura niyan. Once you enter the Slido link. So right here, you can now enter your question. So you may enter it while we are live, while the speaker is presenting, or during the question and answers. Likewise, uh, the slide code for this webinar, again, I repeat, is 36496. Participants watching us on Facebook may also participate in our Q&A through Slido or the comment section of our live stream on the DLSU Arts Congress Facebook page. To begin the program, let us gather in peace as we ask for God's blessings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving Father, our Lasallian family draws near to you in fervent prayer for all those affected by the COVID-19 by COVID-19. In faith, we lift up to you our fears and anxieties and the sufferings of those who have been infected always remembering that even in our darkest hours, we are in your most holy presence. In service, we beg you for strength and wisdom. Sorry. Uh, and wisdom to do all the needs to be done, knowing that we can be channels of your healing grace when we do all our actions. For the love of you in communion in communion we stand in solidarity with all the frontliners who risk their lives for our for others and pray for all medical teams and support personnel who earnestly seek its cure and provide remedy and comfort to those who are sick and most vulnerable most loving father we trust our lives and the health and well-being of our families and communities to your care and protection 
for with you we will be safe and secure. Amen. The Lasallian Prayer I will continue, O my God, to do all my actions for the love of you. St. John Baptist de La Salle, pray for us. For us. Give Jesus in our hearts forever. forever. To, to welcome us to day two of this year's Arts Congress, here's Dr. Ron Resurrection, the Associate Dean of the College of Liberal Arts. Sir Ron, hindi po kayo nag-i-unit. Do you hear me now? Okay po. Alright, thank you. Uh, good morning everyone. Uh, thank you for participating in the 14th DLSU Arts Congress with the theme, Pandemic Resilience in the Arts. Thank you, Ma'am Mimi Santos, for being our esteemed speaker for our webinar this morning. During this pandemic, Many aspects of our lives were put on hold. Face-to-face -face schooling, graduations, weddings, family vacations, social interactions, but not our appreciation of the arts. In fact, the arts became our protective factor. It made us more resilient during this challenging time. And many of us coped through writing, painting, designing, performing, and other form of, forms of, arts, of art. The pandemic is bringing out the artistic inside us or the artists inside us. It forced us to slow down and appreciate the beauty of things we didn't give attention to before COVID-19 happened. And I believe this webinar will lead to appreciation of more things around us. we become curators in our own little ways. So thank you to Dr. Dennis Trinidad in the Office of the Assistant Dean for Research and Advanced Studies and the Culture and Arts Office for organizing this webinar and the entire Arts Congress. Once again, thank you. Enjoy the webinar and the rest of the Congress. Thank you for kicking off today's series of events with an inspiring message, Dr. Ron. Curation is a combination of cognitive, creative, technical, and a lot of behind the scenes process before the glamour. Curators, artists, and the team collectively work to present a visual narrative to communicate a conceptual art discourse. Our speaker is a graduate of fine arts, advertising major with further education in museum studies from the University of the Philippines in Diliman. She is a practicing curator and teacher of art appreciation in DLSU and other schools. She traces her journey to the field of art curation and art practice from her internship days at the Metropolitan Museum of Manila in 1994, the UP Vargas Museum, Pulion Museum and Archives, and Galeria, Galeria Duemila, and the NCCA Gallery, where she served as its man managing curator for 10 years. She is currently, exhibit she is currently an ed independent curator handling exhibition projects for several artists and institutions with a major project called Assistance for Filipino Artisans under the National Commission for Culture and the Arts. Participants, let us welcome Ms. Mimi Santos. Uh, thank you, Joshua. Um, let me, thank you for inviting me to this webinar. Um, let me share my screen. Uh, uh, for my presentation. So I'm going to talk about curation in art and art in curation. Uh, which is basically uh, what I've learned through uh, the years of practice of, 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 of exhibition um, organizing and, and design. So uh, let us first start by defining what curation is. 
So um, it comes from the Latin word curare, means to take care of um, the traditional definition of curate link to the discipline of fine arts, uh, anthropology, archaeology, history, art studies, and other liberal arts, uh, which emerged during the 18th century with the solidification of, of the museum milieu. Um, this terminology recognized the curator's role as the custodian or guardian of collections wherein um, the crucial role is uh, the careful uh, research, selection uh, of objects or content which are to be presented to the public um, in a museum or institution or a gallery setup, most typically in the form of um, an exhibition. So um, it is worth thinking about the etymology and variations and deviation of the word. So curare, curate, curate, or curation. Uh, ano ba yung meaning that, or ano ba yung deviation word than, than curate? The word was used in ancient Rome by priests and chief um, supervisors of public services, such as um, those looking after the sewers and pipelines in, and baths in the empire. Um, it was in the 14th century when it saw another variation in the form of curatus, uh, referring to the guardians, managers, and overseers, mainly in the sense of parish priest, priest rather taking care of the whole village. Um, curating is a practice that may require a numbered roles, conjunction of voices, um, and varying degrees of participation. Uh, it is an expansive field committed to um, taking on new challenges and nuances of cultural mediation. In other words, uh, its extent uh, instills the vocation with perpetual mystery and um, the ability to challenge uh, different perspectives. So that is according to Gerardo Chavez Massa. Um, let's revisit where all, the, all of this started. So uh, perhaps uh, it all started in the depository of curiosities, which um, came out in the Western countries back um, and during the ancient times. So although the Greeks and the Romans thought of the museum in different terms or exhibition in different terms from those uh, we use today, the ancient world did possess public collections of objects um, valued for their aesthetic, historic, religious, or magical importance. So uh, the museum idea was barely kept alive in Western Europe during the Middle Ages uh, and churches and cathedrals venerated relics with statues and saints embellished with jewelry, oriental fabrics. But then the Crusades brought back fabulous art uh, and objects to add to the treasure of those um, uh, cabinets in Europe. So on the other side of the world, in Islam, China, and Japan, similar accumulations were made in the 18th century. Uh, at the Todaiji Monastery at the Nara near Kyoto, uh, which was probably, uh, which is probably considered as one of the uh, oldest museums in the world, they tried to, you know, create this, those cabinet of curiosities. So during the 17th century, um, depository of curiosities or cabinets of curiosities, as we may call it now, were designated spaces where people gathered and displayed exotic trinkets. Um, alongside artworks already endowed with value and significance more often than not includes the director. So uh, moving on to the next slide, the cu to curate is, um, or to curate an exhibit is to create a collection of works, whether in an institution or by the same or different artists that have some commonality for an involved interpretation of the material for an intended audience. So I will just show you some of the um, curated works at the NC State Gallery where I used to work for. So um, uh, this was uh, exhibited at um, June to July 20, 2019 at the NC State Gallery by Mideo Cruz, which he presented his discourse about uh, excess, uh, where he presented all these um, uh, uh, assemblages and, and other uh, art forms or artworks which Mideo created uh, or accumulated for the past years uh, to, you know, create uh, his own uh, discourse about um, um, excess. 
So another uh, exhibitions that we or exhibition rather that we presented at the at the NC, NCC gallery, uh, which was curated by Jonathan Olasa back in 2011, was the Benta retrospective, Benta Graphics. Um, another uh, uh, exhibition which was created by Jonathan Olasa for the NCC gallery's adaptation of uh, uh, a strange case. Uh, which we organized students from the University of the Philippines or fine arts students from the University of the Philippines to create a contemporary and conceptual art exhibition. So um, moving on, the curator or curators has to connect points and bridge gaps um, and bridging ideas between artists, the public, and the institution, and so on. So, and of course, um, other types of communities. So for this particular exhibition, we, um, um, allow me to share is, is um, uh, an exhibition that happened in 2016, uh, 2006 rather, at the Culion Island in Culion, Palawan, wherein uh, the, the Culion Leprosy um, um, Center or um, the colony, uh, celebrated the uh, 100 years of Kulyon uh, for the museum and archives. So we gathered materials and, and collections of the Kulyon Museum to present it in a contemporary uh, way, wherein the community will be, may, may uh, engage in the exhibition that is related to themselves. So um, the core of this work is to build transitory communities by connecting different people and practices and creating the conditions for triggering sparks between them. So, yeah. Okay, let me uh, share um, a little bit of the profession. The fact that museum studies or curatorial courses studies are springing up in great numbers and the frequent references uh, are made to museum profession does not mean that someone is attempting to um, homogenize our careers and force us into um, a mold of a single profession, like directors, curators, educators, designers, and other museum professionals will always have very specialties just as two lawyers or doctors. So the paramount essence of the profession is a common cause. Content objects are still important, whether artistic, historical, scientific, and well-tested standards have been developed for their materials, collection, conservation, and of course, interpretation or presentation to the public. So a professional must, of course, possess special and specialized knowledge acquired after intensive academic or equivalent training. So um, following the rise of conceptual art during the 60s and the 70s and the growing debate around institutional critique, the creator's role took a major turn. Uh, the 90s established the super visibility of the curator, which included uh, the, the delineation of the term and academic canonization of the specific, of the specific exhibitions and the curatorial practice. The word took off completely from its traditional sense and started being used for people and organizations a lot. So here in the Philippines, uh, according to visual artist Phyllis Baliero and 13 artist cohort Phyllis Baliero, uh, I had a chance to interview her for this um, talk. The term marked its visibility at the cultural center of the Philippines around 1975 um, when Roberto Chabet was the director and Ray Albano was the curator. So there was also the that was also the time when contemporary practice of artists, curators started servicing in the local art scene. I also had the chance to interview Juni before for my paper at the University of the Philippines. Uh, when the curation uh, word started or uh, surfaced in the Philippines, he said um, during their time back in the 60s, uh, what they only knew is uh, the term display or exhibit. There's no curation or curator term during that time. So he said that according uh, when when the West, the West was the one who labeled it as curation or curator. So that was the time when they learned that a curation or curator has something to do with the exhibition. So yeah. Nowadays, curatorial practice is linked to con contextual frameworks, whether independent or within the museum or institutional context. 
the independent curator, for example, seeks to develop research-based projects or, or exhibition proposals as a reaction to contemporary discourse uh, and as a way to experiment with the visual field um, and the inter integration of various audiences and disciplines. So uh, this, is an, this is an example of uh, uh, an exhibition that, that, that pertains to a particular discourse. Uh, this was again shown at the NCC Gallery, Walang Kikilos, Kikilos uh, back in 2017. Uh, this was um, uh, an idea of, of Poklong and Nadine and, and other artists involved in this exhibition, which includes MM uh, Yu, um, Romeo Lee, um, John Lloyd Cruz, uh, who else? And other uh, visual artists, uh, visual and, and, and conceptual artists in the Philippines. So uh, this is a concerted effort. Uh, that's why we have like three curators, which includes Poklong and Nadine as the uh, main um, curator for the content. And then of course, Karina Evangelista. And uh, I was part of the organizing committee to make this exhibition happen. So this, this, this uh, exhibition, this is, is a discourse about Manila traffic situation during that time when uh, uh, it has come to the worst um, phase of, of, of that part, that year, something like that. So, okay, moving on, it has gone through a lot of etymological changes over the centuries. Once the term of high regard with the administrative peculiarity and artistic behavior, scholarly prestige and exclusivity, the term curate and curator appears a cliche word now, used by every layman with distinguished knack for calling from an acclaimed musician to a new hipster on YouTube. Um, curate or curator, curation seem to be um, the fashionable representation of, for all the content that requires scheme in the contemporary world. The fate of the eminent world word rather deviated with reference to a variety of topics. So, everyone's a curator now. So also recently, the term curator or curation has been a problematic in several cultural domains. So it's becoming a trendy terminology in all aspects to include a curated by label advo advocating for and selling pre-selection by experts disregarding its rich and prominent history. So this is perhaps pertaining to a particular artifacts or, or collection that's coming out in the market without you know proper research and all that. So the drift is igniting a growing debate among artists, curators, and other world art world professionals um, about everything from where to draw the line between amateurs and experts. So um, let us move to the art and curation. So this, this is basically how it goes or how the process and methods of, of creating an exhibition uh, um, uh, um, develop. So art and curation, the kinds of exhibit, an exhibit may be defined as a showing or display of materials for the purpose of communication with an audience, often the general public. So um, in museums, they employ original objects um, to inspire or to inform just like in the case of National Museum and other in, uh, um, institutions who uh, exhibit permanent or long-term exhibition. So in art fairs or other commercial galleries and trade fairs, they frankly advertise and the purpose is for selling. So the different, different purpose um, affect the nature of exhibits and the display technique used. Museum exhibit, are usually a less theatrical and gaudy than the commercial one because their purpose is you know to uh, share and, and educate uh, the public about the particular collection although uh, some museums now are you know practicing um, a different style in, in uh, presenting their exhibition so they, they also update their uh, design and, and other uh, matters in regards to exhibition. So art exhibitions that are not uh, for profit, whether traditional or conceptual in nature, usually let the work of art directly communicate with the viewer and to use exhibition techniques as unassumingly and with refinement. So this type of exhibition um, 
strive for totally honest presentation and discourse and avoid gimmicks and hoopla that may accompany the commercial exhibition. So uh, what are the different classes of, 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 of exhibition rather? So as far as I, 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 I know uh, with regards to exhibition practice, uh, there are two uh, types of uh, or classes of exhibition. The first one is permanent. It, this is in the context of a museum, the permanent collections that are on display at all times or uh, unless uh, the artwork or particular collection is being repaired or on loan. So they have to change that into a, uh, something that is part of the, the museum collection. So, and then the other one, of course, is temporary uh, uh, exhibitions. So they are changing, they're ephemeral. So uh, either long-term, like for one to two years or short-term, which is like one week. So this is in the context of museum and of course in the galleries or artist run spaces are always temporary. So, but some of them are commercial in nature and some of them are not for profit. So in the museum context of permanent and temporary exhibition are often much the same in their theme, centered uh, plan, circulation layout uh, and design techniques. So exhibition in museums and other cultural institutions can be classified as you know, teaching while in other spaces they can be, uh, uh, they can employ a different thought. So just the same exhibition shall be uh, carefully organized to present the topics or themes through the series of objects arranged or either uh, ordered sequence uh, or in nonlinear uh, exhibition, these are supported by uh, interpretive um, aids such as labels, diagrams, of course, artworks, uh, models, and perhaps multimedia devices. So what is the chief component of an exhibition? Of course, the, the first one or the first, the chief component is the idea. So the storyline the objects to be displayed, and of course the space uh, using various exhibit methods. So let us go to the curatorial um, order. So every exhibition, whether museums or galleries or artist run space, or perhaps a public space and other art spaces often use curatorial order in organizing their show. So this is, I just created a diagram, which is uh, the exhibitions, the center of, of of, of, of the work. So around it should be uh, all the uh, matters what, which requires completion before the exhibition. So this is uh, from planning to execution or from rather from organization to planning, execution, and of course assessment, and then go back to organization planning. So moving on. So how do you organize the curatorial team? So this is, this is during the pre-exhibition requirement. Uh, once the artist or the institution assume that there is an exhibition, you have to organize, of course, your team. So uh, in, in, in a regular exhibition, I would suggest that if this is a one year or a minimum of one year organization of the whole team for an exhibition to be, you know, a little, um, or to be a success rather. So, so who are the, the curatorial team? So usually these are com uh, curator or curators, artists, researchers, uh, writers, uh, collections catalogers. So uh, later on we'll know what collection cataloging is. So this is for bigger museum and for permanent collection or probably for traveling exhibition within the context of the museum and galleries which has a specialized materials and, and well, of course, special exhibitions. So of course you need a graphic designer, art installers, administrative coordinators, uh, packers and movers, which takes care of the art collection or the art, the moving and packing of collection, photographers, videographers, laborers, carpenters, electricians, and of course other people who may, uh, uh, who may on, help us in the uh, creation of the exhibition. So how do we start with the 
the exhibition process. So, we, of course, the preparation of the exhibition script is one of the most important things in the initial stages of the exhibit development. So, everything starts from the dots. It can take a walk, it can, you know, uh, it may crash on a bump and tell a lot of stories from the most simple to the huge and complex exhibition. So, you need everything start from the dots. So, ideation to careful research are important components to elucidate the story. And the visual narrative envisioned by the, either the institution or the artist or the curator or the whole team. So this arrangement may be chronological, historical, geography, or some other principle, but it makes judgment of quality, value, and space compact. So developing a clear um, exhibition concept requires intensive research. So hindi lang siya basta ginagawa. Hindi lang siya bukas na exhibit ngayon gagawa tayo ng concept. So development of exhibit concepts, script, and design layout, planning, production of artworks for contemporary exhibitions, or cleaning of artworks for permanent collections, selection of art pieces, and other uh, stuff in relation to the exhibition, choosing design techniques, labels, and lighting, lighting and budgeting uh, is part of the uh, initial stage of the preparation. So. For the photograph below, uh, we started by, you know, um, ravishing through the collection of the Met. This this one we create, we curated for the NC State Galleries was the Met Met Theater collection of costumes, which was, you know, nakatambak dun sa old Met uh, theater uh, na um, ginagawa ng time na yun. So we have to you know, unearth all those stuff with all the insect and dust and uh, two decades of, you know, uh, other matters attached to the collection. So we have to clean it and then, of course, document and everything. So that's part of the process if you're uh, uh, exhibiting a, a particular collection. Uh, moving on. So once the exhibit has been agreed upon or approved, the team shall, you know, start planning for start planning everything for so the museum a context the curator for the museum or sometimes the exhibit designer and for sometimes the institution collection of uh, which involves exhibit uh, uh, exhibiting artists and curator they must all be ready to study the space and work on other necessary requirements for the exhibition so what's for uh, ano yung part ng mga ng planning stage so uh, everything must work on simultaneously you have to go to the meeting you have to talk to the artist and of course uh start uh, uh creating your reverse calendar uh leading to the museum uh, to the exhibition opening so everything uh must simultaneously work together the team must plan and prepare accordingly otherwise para siyang domino so there's there's going to be a domino effect and that will affect the whole exhibition and of course, the, the exhibit. So, so creating the layout. So the curator or exhibition designer or artist shall of course first consider the space and the space requirements. So you, you just don't put, or you just don't bring an artwork into a specific space and then hang it on the wall. So you have to, to, uh, to study the space. Big decision is the viewer circulation of food traffic when you want when you are designing, of course, an exhibition. In some cases, exhibitions are designed to induce the visitor to view all the exhibitions, especially in big exhibitions or in big museums and galleries or probably in complex space. Sorry. So um, Modern and uh, contemporary design emphasize desirability of keeping the techniques and paraphernalia simple, direct, and inconspicuous to enhance the collection display for the exhibition uh, materials to speak. So how do you choose the design techniques? So uh, exhibitions are usually presented in rectangular or spare room uh, for the traditional exhibition. So utilizing four wall and floor spaces for the pictures and, and of course, there's uh, probably a permanent panel and other uh, 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 planes and podiums to support the display. So, but this arrangement can be permanent to lose and all. So, uh, as, as some of the curators call it, the tyranny of the rectangular white room. So, 
uh, modern contemporary designers now prefer uh, or prefer curved angles, breakers, movable panels, and etc. that appeal and, and, and change thus diminishing exhibition fatigue and boredom. For linear exhibition uh, or for museum exhibition that are you know uh, linear in, in nature, the curator or the designer must remember that uh, the average eye level for a man is five feet five inches woman is five feet and for uh, uh, children is uh, three feet. So you must, uh, um, all the curators have this um, uh, knowledge about the middle line. So while, while let, me, um, let me just share this, this sketch that I made for, um, I think an exhibition in Dabo where I was not there, I cannot attend, but I have to send the designer about the, 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 the you know, the, the design of the exhibition. So I have to explain why there is a middle line and why there is one meter uh, from the wall. So, because that's a linear exhibition that they were, you know, uh, uh, installing. So uh, my, my, my explanation to, to her is uh, not too tall or not too slow, uh, not too low rather, to achieve vision level. So this is the scientific um, uh, explanation. So as not to strain the neck of the reader. So an elliptical cone of vision restricts comfortable and head movements to about 30 degrees. So pag masyadong mataas for a linear and traditional exhibition, may strain your neck. Because you have the tendency is you have to, you know, uh, tilt your neck or your, your head up. So that's going to strain your neck. So from the eye level up to the up, uh, eye level, uh, level up and down and about 45 degrees from side to side. So it, it's not too far from, from where, where you can view your uh, or the artwork rather. So this is for you know linear exhibition, but of course contemporary or conceptual exhibit is has different you know uh, 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 principle for uh, designing exhibition or the design technique. So lighting, why is lighting important? Uh, this is one of the chief ingredients in an exhibition, and uh, of course uh, of the curator and the designer. Lighting makes audience feel comfortable. Lighting emphasizes roundness, solidity, and of course, surface qualities. So it can be directed to an artwork or, or a figure um, exactly. Sometimes uh, um, artists or, or, or exhibition designers or curators doesn't want lights direct, uh, directly uh, uh, light uh, towards the artwork rather. So these are just examples of lighting um, um, designed by by curators for uh, exhibitions at the end stage. So, a part of, of of the curation process or the curation order is uh, you have to produce a curatorial uh, collaterals. Collaterals are the basic means that communicates effectively with the chosen audience. They must attract the viewer's attention and give information about, you know, the exhibition or objects on display um, in a concise yet understandable way by successfully provoking his curiosity uh, and uh, shall motivate the viewer to check and look at the whole exhibition. So for our practice before the NCA gallery, we require the artists and the curators, you know, to produce uh, different types of collaterals that may help um, promote the exhibition. So, of course, we request for press release and then uh, the curatorial text or the curatorial um, notes, what we call it. And then uh, there's the wall, wall text, uh, which basically is the title of the show. So for, for uh, this one, the wheel, and then, of course, there are like exhibition and, of course, um, labels for a particular exhibition. But, of course, not all exhibition required, like Kunyari labels. So, in San, um, they would they would only produce um, um, invitation or or not really a, a a hard copy invitation, but they would some artists are 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 into digital invitation. Some artists doesn't want a curatorial note, especially uh, if it's a conceptual in nature. So they want the, the viewers, you know, to interpret their the exhibition of, on their own. So. But of course, since uh, I was working with the NC State Gallery, and it's an institution that you know requires to give information to about the exhibition, so 
uh, all of the exhibition uh, in the NCC gallery has, you know, this type of collaterals that you request from, from uh, exhibitors and artists. So another type of collateral is the exhibition catalog. So this is not just important for the institution, but also for the artist, because this is, you know, the, the, the summation of, of everything that uh, trans transpired in the exhibition. So the artists are free to, to put anything or everything with regards to the exhibition in, in the exhibition catalog. So this is uh, sometimes this, uh, the exhibition catalog would uh, uh, present the documentation of the entire exhibition from the day uh, it was, you know, uh, uh, conceptualized up to the last um, um, phase of the exhibition. Sometimes uh, our artists even include uh, past works not related to exhibition. So, so that's uh, about the exhibition catalog. And of course, uh, in in some other exhibitions, and, and of course in, in in institutions and museums that uh, uh, have trust of, you know, uh, education and, and teaching uh, the youth and students. Uh, we produce, we tend to produce pictures guides. So this is, this is one way of, you know, uh, interpreting the museum, uh, the, the exhibition rather. Uh, the, the guide will uh, guide the teachers, of course, on how to interpret the exhibition and this, this this kind of, of teacher's guide helps a lot in, in you know, explaining about the exhibition, especially to young uh, uh, students, elementary and high school students. So let's move to the execution of physical exhibition. So after, after the conceptualization and all the preparations prior to, to uh, the execution of the physical exhibit, so, uh, before you go to the first or the initial stage of the physical exhibition, which is the ingress. So what's what's happening in the ingress? So um, this is where you know you 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 go to the the artist or you you collect the artworks and and this is the, the phase where the artworks uh, start to arrive at the gallery or the uh, uh, exhibition space. So. It is um, interesting to note that uh, some of the exhibitions, uh, you have to be uh, aware of uh, what's within the collection for exhibit. So like for, I, I posted here um, an, art, an artwork that came from one of the regions. It helps that you have uh, knowledge in conservation and handling art collections because like for this particular um, art, work uh, along bottom right, uh, they arrived at the gallery with a little damage and of course the packing is not uh, proper. So uh, it helps that you, you know how to document art pieces so that uh, uh, you'll have uh, documentation and records of, of the look of the art or the condition of the artworks that arrived in the gallery or in the museum or in the artist run space. So this will help you uh, uh, report about the, the incident to either the exhibitor or the artist. So, so this will avoid uh, further problems uh, when it comes to you know, exhibition preparation. So this is what's happening in the ingress. So preparation of art exhibition materials, arriving of artwork, arrival rather of artworks, and then of course preparation of artworks on the designated walls that you intend to, to hang. So let me just share you about uh, what is condition report. So this is, uh, if you're into, um, if you are into museum practice or into um, um, inventory uh, practice, this is kind of a little bit of a, an inventory or condition a report of a particular artwork. So this is an important uh, paper or document that that requires, you know, the history or the, the the condition of the artwork. When 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 an artwork is probably going uh, uh, to another place, or uh, you, you you need to loan the artwork, or when the artwork arrives at the gallery. So this is an important document uh, for historical purposes and of course for the condition 
to avoid further um, uh, uh, dilemma later when or nuances when it comes to handling collection. So um, condition report can be uh, one page from from a minimal of one page up to you know uh, like five pages uh, for museum uh, collection. Sometimes uh, a condition report will uh, like. For a particular artwork or for a particular artifact, this can be up to five pages. So, to stay uh, for a museum collection, um, condition report is very important for them because this is part of the research uh, uh, process of, for a particular um, artifact. So, to nakikita yung provenance history and, of course, changes, damage, repairs, etc., of a particular artwork. So uh, part of the ingress also is the space refurbishing. So this is the time when you, uh, you know, uh, repaint the gallery or repaint the space for uh, the incoming exhibition. So this may take place or uh, either uh, two weeks before or a week before the actual installation of the exhibition. So uh, the color of the wall de uh, depends on the requirement of the artist or the curator or the exhibition designer. So the gallery or the institution or the exhibition space may, you know, uh, uh, always, of course, um, um, follow what the requirement of those uh, exhibitors um, request. So hanging and installation. So, so this is the time or the day when uh, most of the shoutings, walkouts, and killings happen. So, you know, between curators, the artists, and the stores. So, so, because uh, this is the most tiring, but of course the most rewarding phase of the curatorial order. So why why most of the shoutings, walkouts, and killings happen during this particular day? Because uh, most of the curators will, even if they have the map yet. Uh, and even if they've already lined up the, the, the paintings, they, and then they, even if they already hung the paintings, uh, sometimes they will request you to, you know, uh, take down again the painting, the whole exhibition, and then of course they, they change their mind, and then they change their, their idea of the design. So, so this is really a, a very tiring um, uh, phase of the exhibition process. This is where you 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 know you, you put the labels if there's a label requirement. So for some exhibition, there's no label requirement, especially for conceptual uh, art uh, exhibition in, in nature. So yeah. So after, of course, the installation, there's going to be the vernissage, uh, the opening, and the launching. So this is the glamour uh, phase of the exhibition. So in glamour right now. So for for some exhibitions. Uh, let me just show you. So this is where uh, the artist and of course exhibition curator and other uh, uh, visitors and guests are gathered to you know view, make cheetah and other uh, uh, stuff which is related to the exhibition opening. So this uh, exhibition of these students back in the early 2000 and then of course there are different types of exhibition openings. Like for this one, this is based on two different uh, exhibitions at the NCCA Gallery. Her first exhibition, the NCCA Gallery, the opening was like a fashion show because she showed her uh, crochet um, dresses for uh, the exhibition. So the second exhibition was, was part of uh, uh, Kanlungan, uh, which she called uh, exhibited with Jed Merino. So, it's still uh, it's a textile or fabric exhibition, but with a different uh, narrative. So, uh, and of course she, uh, she, she did the performance art uh, during the exhibition and she, you know, uh, connect with the exhibition of Vincent Padilla, those from CSP and, and practicing um, teacher uh, at the other side of the gallery. So another type of exhibition opening is, is where, where artists or where, where guests would participate so this is an open exhibition with you know uh, uh, that requires um, participation from from different um, guests so this is uh, an exhibition that that centers on research something like that so 
So, and then, then let me just show you all um, other types of exhibitions that we, you know, hosted at the NCC Gallery. So, uh, at the top left is the first ever exhibition at the NCC Gallery, which Noel Far Farol and Murphy uh, Pueblo um, installed or created at the end for the NCC Gallery. And then, of course, there are uh, exhibitions that are conceptual in nature, like this Pinabu Ang Lupa by Alwin Ri Emilio. And of course, other exhibition, Bent Up Graphics. And of course, this uh, Little Bear exhibition was uh, presented by um, a group of young kids from four years old to, to uh, I think that 13 years old that time. So they, they went through a series of workshops, which is part of the NCTA Galleries Trust, and then they presented their own um, uh, workshop uh, output for uh, an exhibition with the aid, of course, of the uh, curator and, of course, the, the workshop handler during that time. So, moving on. Exhibit interpretation, uh, uh, or every exhibition, uh, either in, in big museums and or smaller gallery space or nonprofit space or either or artist run space requires an inter um, lecture, forum, seminars, and activities. So for the NCC gallery, uh, for during that time, we we request artists and exhibitors to uh, at least present an art talk or a workshop, a forum, a seminar, and and, and other uh, related uh, um, activities to as as a collateral for the exhibition. So of course, uh, docenting is part of a museum uh, practice, but uh, some small galleries or nonprofit galleries also uh, accept docents. So these docents are volunteers that may help you, you know, um, uh, with the exhibition process. They can document artworks or they may help you in installing exhibitions. But of course, uh, docents. Uh, uh, shall be assisted by um, uh, the curatorial team who knows how to handle uh, exhibition because um, uh, we, we try to avoid um, uh, problems when it comes to handling art, uh, artworks. Some artworks are sensitive and some artworks requires, you know, professional handling. And most of the time, docents uh, help in, you know, explaining about the exhibition. So part also of the exhibition is audience building and publicity. So, so this uh, not only as as, as a collateral for the artists who, you know, um, add to the exhibition, but um, publicity helps a lot in 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 exhibition. So of course we seek um, audience through uh, promotion of the exhibition, either print or television, or uh, invitation to uh, uh, schools, to a, a physical uh, invitation. We go to schools or we send letters and other uh, exhibition paraphernalia to uh, invite uh, students to view the exhibition. So the last phase of the exhibition is, uh, of course, the egress. So this is the, when, when the exhibition ends, you have to, you know, uh, the way you receive the artwork or the art collection, you have to extra, uh, have to, to, you know, uh, to create an extra effort or to, to make an extra effort to, 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 uh, to return the artwork in, in similar or probably uh, mass, uh, mass, mass careful uh, packaging and, uh, and, and and care for the artwork. So most of the exhibition require um, careful packing or repacking of artwork, especially for, for sensitive artwork. So we also hire uh, uh, professional packers sometimes if we cannot, you know, handle the. If, if it's a huge exhibition, if you if you lack staff to, to help you repack all the artwork, so you have to, to hire a professional packer and mover. So to ease your, you know, uh, uh, job also, and of course these professional factors oh, uh, uh, that we what, that we hire uh, already knows how to handle exhibition material. So, but then of course even if they are uh, 
professional enough to to repack and pack things uh the curator or the exhibition team uh shall be present during the the, you know, the repacking of the artworks so of course you know monitor how the packing of, of the artworks are done so yeah so after of course the exhibition is the evaluation and assessment of exhibition report so this is the time wherein you you uh, analyze uh, what are the strengths of the exhibition, the weaknesses, or, uh, opportunities, and what, what are the threats uh, of the exhibition. So this is the, mainly the SWOT analysis that you write about the exhibition report, uh, include all the documentation, what transpired and everything. So, yeah. And then, of course, uh, that ends the curatorial order. So for, for my... For our new project, uh, where I am part of at the uh, Cultural Committees and Traditional sec um, Arts section of the NCTA, uh, we were also affected by the ongoing pandemic. So since um, um, our project, uh, Assistance to Artisans, required uh, traveling exhibitions of the works or the output of the School of Living Tradition and other artisans uh, that we grant um, uh that we, we, we give grants to so we have to rethink of, of how to present an exhibit in to the public or how to educate the public about uh what's going on with assistance to artisans so uh due to this we tried to create a visual ex virtual art exhibition and we 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 included in the in the uh, curatorial team, Dr. Patrick Flores of UP, to you know help us uh, um, manage and you know uh, uh, came up with this uh, virtual exhibition that is uh, uh, relevant to to our uh, project. So let me just show you. Can I just uh, stop sharing and then I'll I'll, I'll I'll show you the exhibition, how we uh, we started last June and then we were able to create the website and the virtual exhibit uh, where uh, you, th this is this is a public exhibition that you can view or access uh, at the World Wide Web. So let me just share the screen for the, So um, this is a different website from the NCSA. This is the virtual exhibition we titled Kalao. This is in reference to the uh, um, crafts um, output of the School of Living Tradition. So you may access the, the assistance to artisans.com, the PH um, virtual exhibition at this site. So let me just show you the sample of, of, of how it we you can view the exhibit. First, and obvious is first of the three series of exhibitions that we will, you know, upload in, in this website for the public to access. Introduction to assistance for Filipino artisans. So, so we seek to promote um, uh, support the capabilities of Filipino artisans, thereby strongly placing them to advance the production of their traditional art. So this is a website of the artisans for the artisans and for the Filipino and other, you know, of course, uh, regions around the world to see. So uh, the, the, the program or the project grants uh, for raw materials and tools, and technical support, and the dissemination of creative production by way of marketing and promotion, the assistance for the you know, artisans program. So uh, since we cannot uh, do exhibition, we try to create this virtual exhibition. So you can just click where the galleries are. Let me just show you how it is. So this is called So we created our own gallery to present the meeting for the virtual exhibition, where you can, you know, uh, grasp the, the idea of the exhibition. So, 
you're just like um, going in through. Uh, so we, 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 we organized a group of, of, of curatorial team to you know, help us create this um, exhibition and make um, this wonderful exhibition for the artists. So yeah, and then of course, uh, while pan while the exhibition was panning, you you may notice that uh, it's it's a bit you know um, uh, mobilized, but uh, of course you can access what the exhibition is about at the bottom of the exhibition. So this is how we designed the exhibition, uh, online exhibition. So you may you may um, access uh, about the exhibition at the bottom, and then of course about the the, the pieces of the exhibition at the bottom of the, the web or the site. So everything. So the 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 we 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 envisioned a three or, or several exhibitions. For now, uh, since uh we are also limited, uh we're also into you know our movements also as as as, as project staff of the, the the systems for Filipino artisans are limited. So now we open, we have a project, uh, an open call for photography um, submission from within the community of the artisans. So we, we are uh, uh, gathering photographs that uh, the narrative of the community to submit so that they can, you know, show in this uh, web. So, so you may access that at assistance for Filipino artisans or assistance to artisans that so let me just uh, share screen. So I think, yeah. So assistance uh, to artisans.com.ph rather. So yeah, that's how we rethink our, our project and program during the pandemic. And of course, we, we intend to continue this even after the pandemic. So with that, uh, that's, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for listening and uh, good day. Once again, um, once again, thank you, Miss Mimi, for the fruitful webinar on art curation, and to our participants who sent in their questions. Actually, um, for our questions, there was one question in particular. Na how do from a, from an anonymous person? Ah, uh, hindi niya pinangalanan na sarili niya. How do museum curators respond to the pandemic? How are art exhibitions done in this period of pandemic? And so actually it was ano eh, na-discuss ni Ma'am Mimi dito sa presentation. You can actually find, ah, pinopya ko po yung link. Actually search it myself. And you can find the link of assistance to art. Ito po sa group chat ng Zoom. So you may check it out. Uh, likewise, uh, we have another, these are comments from Sir Voltaire. So, sabi po ni Sir Voltaire, I appreciate the introduction presented by Ma'am Mimi, particularly the etymology of the word curation. Now, I understand the link between the use of the word curation in the museum context and how the Catholic Church uses the word kuria. And he further asks, from your experience, Ma'am, how much leeway or flexibility is given to the museum curator in putting together an exhibit? And can the museum owners and artists, uh, quote unquote, veto the ideas of the museum curator? Oh, of course, if you're working in an institution, uh, there are chances. Chances are may mga exhibitions that are, you know, uh, uh, how do we call it? If I may call it, sing it. <laughs> so there are, we cannot help uh, those kind of, you know, exhibition, even if there are, you know, uh, already a calendar of exhibition in, in your, uh, the whole year. But we cannot avoid some um, 
uh, exhibitions that do not have this, you know, yun yung, yun yung, yun yung uh, to be honest, that's, that's the most hated part of being a, an exhibition, art exhibition practitioner or probably curator and art designers uh, that uh, you need to, to put up an exhibition within the week or within two days. Because there's, you know, the lack of, you know, preparation. Preparation in exhibition is very important. So as I've mentioned, so because uh, otherwise it's not going to be as, as the way you think you want your exhibitions to be. So the way you want to present your exhibition, that's not going to work. So really preparation is, is, is important. But of course, since you cannot help, you have to deliver. So like the one that I've shown, the, the Met Museum, a Met Theater rather, uh, exhibition, so uh, the, 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 the institution back then um, envisioned that there's going to be um, an exhibition of uh, Met Theater uh, costume collection by December. And we were informed like around end of uh, uh, middle of November. So we, like, we, we, we have like 15 days to prepare everything. And you have to rummage through all those uh, dirty stuff. So, of course, in the ending, you have to, 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 to get sick. You, 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 the stress level is really up to, you know, head up, mas mataas pa sa ulo mo, and etc. But then again, as, as uh, one of the most important thing in, in exhibition uh, management is you have to work with the team. Otherwise, you're gonna left, you're gonna be left behind, or there's gonna, there's, it's, it's going to be a, an unsuccessful exhibition. So what happened during that time? Preparation. So we have to gather all the, the team that can, you know, uh, 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 assist and, you know, put their efforts into to create that particular exhibition. So yeah, did I answer the question? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ma'am Mimi. Uh, for everyone who would still like to ask, because we still have a lot of time, uh, you can enter your questions. So join at slido.com and enter the code 36496. So habang wala pong question, ako po magtatanong ma'am. Okay lang po. Okay lang. So actually, uh, I have a question. Um, why in... Kasi uh, I am... Uh, before the pandemic, actually I'm quite fond of ano din, um, going to exhibits, museums, and etc. etc. Actually, um, now that... Ano, now that actually this is my first time in looking into assistance to artisans.com.ph. So are there any more sites like these where I can just virtually go to an exhibit like in the comfort of my home? Yes, there are a lot of yeah. Uh due to the pandemic, there are a lot of um, um virtual exhibitions happening in around town. Uh, the first, uh, you can check uh, Ultramondo Art Space because they you know, upload their exhibition online. So this is a commercial gallery, but of course, uh, they also put premium in their exhibition design. And then uh, I would suggest um, you, this is the Western um, exhibition you know, uh, platform, kunsmatrix.com, uh, K-U-N-S. Matrix.com, wherein you can rent space and create your own exhibition. So I think the you can rent their space at the minimum thirty dollars. Uh, so uh, during the uh, inception of the exhibit art assistance to Filipino artisans, we tried to you know uh, we we explore the idea of of putting up our exhibition or the assistance for the, the, the School of Living Traditions output 
uh, the Kunst matrix uh, space. But then again, of course, due to the sensitivity of the materials, I mean, you know, uh, ethics-wise, uh, you have if you're if you're working in an institution and of course working for indigenous peoples and other, you have to be, you know, you have to be uh, aware of the ethical practices, of course, of presenting an exhibit. So since that that space is very commercial in nature, so we opted not to present the the exhibition in Kunst Matrix, although we can, you know, we we can manage our own um, um, exhibit in that particular space. But of course, since there are thousands or probably hundreds of exhibition in that space, Matatabunan. Uh, so we 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 decided to create our own website and present our own exhibit in a two-dimensional moving form. So we we look for an artist, a graphic artist that. Uh, that can uh, deliver our idea of a moving ex virtual exhibition. So, so that's that's how it happened uh, to, to our program, to our exhibition. And then, of course, there are several exhibitions, contemporary art galleries presenting their exhibit online, like a um, artist run space um, gallery, uh, and those, uh, several galleries that. Uh, are located in Mega Mall. They are they are also uh, doing online exhibitions uh, available uh, in um, sometimes they, they they post in Instagram and and of course in Facebook. So yeah, and of course there are also other efforts of artists uh, for commercial artists, no man. So they they some artists created their own platform to sell their artworks. And some of the artists uh, uh, opted to create video um, exhibition or video uh, documentation of, of, of what they did during the whole duration of the pandemic. And of course, there are several groups of, of artist community that created a, a, a Facebook group wherein they can you know, post their, um, their creative output, like there's this lockdown diaries. Um, where uh, a lot of artists share uh, online exhibitions, online happenings, and artist uh, output, creative output, and of course, uh, uh, other matters with regards to social and political issues. So that related, which is related to their uh, art making. So some of those uh, platforms are, are available. Okay, uh, thank you po, ma'am. Uh, there are other, we have other questions here, new questions. Uh, thank you. Uh, by the way, nilagay ko rin po yung link sa group chat natin, yung kunz.matrix.com. Actually, you may check. I check this out myself. Likewise, uh, we have new questions here. So, firstly, um, with all the technology, here's one uh, from Anonymous. Again, actually, most of the, all the questions, all the following questions here are anonymous. Uh, with all the technological advances prevalent today in extended reality, AR, VR, XR, how did this affect curation or exhibits? Uh, siguro, uh, in the initial stage of, 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 of the pandemic, uh, of course, nagkaroon ng, not really lull, but uh, of course, resilient din ang mga uh, exhibitions and curators and art. So there's always a way on how to, you know, uh, uh, present their exhibition and, 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 and uh, output using the technology. So uh, the tech... The, the pandemic, uh, I think, perhaps paved way for for several artists, institutions, and, and museums and galleries to make use of the technology to present their own, perhaps, collection or uh, creative output using the technology. So, hindi siya naging hindrance. Technology was not, never uh, was a hindrance for artists. So, they, they tried to use it to present their their uh, uh, exhibition. Oh, of course, with the different you know, uh, 
uh, interface or, or, or even with their own uh, uh, with their um, same discourse and narrative, pero uh, just a different platform. Hindi lang siya face to face. So, yeah. Hindi siya hindrance. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually a positive um, um, what do you call this? Uh, a positive uh, thing that happened. One of the positive things that happened to the artists and the art community and, and the museums is to utilize the technology to present their, their exhibition to the public. So this is another Ankira because there's social uh, there's a lot of things going on around the social media and of course the World Wide Web. But of course, uh, I think uh, in one way or another, um, art museums, galleries, curators, and etc. Art uh, 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 artists uh, they were looking into this uh, use of technology even before the, the pandemic. So how to utilize the the, the technology at that advancement in technology and, and internet uh even way before the pandemic so this was like, this is the time that they were able to you know utilize it to the fullest uh, thank you ma'am uh we have another question here uh this one says uh i understand curation as a form of storytelling and this person would like to ask your comment on curation as a form of storytelling. What? Uh, come again? Uh, the, uh, according to this, ano, uh, sabi po niya, um, and uh, he under he or she understands curation as a form of storytelling, telling a story po. So, would you like to comment, ma'am, on this on curation as a form of storytelling? Uh, curation is uh, storytelling is just a, a part uh, of the curation, the whole curation thing, diba? as I've mentioned in my previous uh, slides. So, uh, an exhibition is uh, the, the exhibition idea is part, or the, the storytelling, or the content, or the ideation part of the whole curation thing. It is not. It's not single. It's not uh, stand alone. I mean, problems or probably um, argument in, in in the term curation. Uh, a lot of, of of people or a lot of of of, of, of people who, who are not aware or not familiar with the practice of taking care of the whole uh, collection is. They thought that curation is just about storytelling and the design. So as I discussed, it's it's the whole thing. Curation is about the whole thing. It's the process, it's the method, there's design, of course, there are all involved in creating the, the exhibition and the story. Yeah, thank you, Pumam. Uh we have another question here. Actually, we have three more questions, actually. So I'm really <laughs> um i hope that it's okay with you ma'am uh, a lot of our participants are very interested in the topic again here naman ma'am uh how did you fall into this line of work as a curator do you have any wisdom for an aspiring curator maybe this individual is an aspiring curator him or herself so as i've said i i did i i didn't get Parang hindi ako napunta dito in an instant. So I, I did not add coffee to be an instant curator. So all the disciplines naman are like that. So uh, I think uh, I, I fell into this uh, because of my passion for, for art back in college after graduation. I think there was an exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum back then about the Vatican collection. And then I visited the Vatican collection uh, exhibition at the Met Museum. And then I, I got into, uh, and then when I saw the exhibition, it was really, you know, fantastic, amazing. So I got interested in the exhibition kind of thing. So I, uh, right there and then, I went to the office, voluntarily went to, to the curatorial office. I think we're, uh, 
Mary Ann Cornelia was there during that time, if I'm not mistaken, or, or another uh, museum staff at the Met Museum. Mary Ann is, by the way, a part of the uh, 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 Contemporary um, Museum at the CSB now. So she, was, she used to work for Met, Met Museum before when we were you know, younger. So I went there and then asked if they accept um, a volunteer or apprentice. So without knowledge about you know museum stuff, I just want to go. To, I just want to to you know to, to know the gritty, nitty gritty of doing the exhibition. And then they said, uh, uh, "Come back another time because we're busy with the Vatican collection, etc." So of course, uh, I'm pushy. So I, I I I I came back after like after the exhibition was. Uh, I think the exhibition was finished and then they returned it to the Vatican collection. So they gave me hope that they can accept me as an, as an apprentice. So yeah, and then uh, eventually I was uh, interviewed by Cora Alvina uh, to be accepted as one of the apprentices of the Metropolitan um, um, Museum during that time. So uh, I really enjoy that because uh, they, 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 they got me in and then they involved me in the education department where, of course, uh, uh, Marianne was, was part of. And then uh, eventually they, uh, all the, the, ikala ko ako lang yung mag -isa. and then meron pa lang several um, apprentices during that time. So also that includes Eileen Legaspi and other, and I think Trek Valdisno, who's a practicing artist. So we were several individuals uh, during that time uh, uh, under the, the, you know, the, the education and art department. So we were involved in, 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 in creating or you know, we assisted in the creation of a particular exhibition. Um, what's that exhibition? Pasita Abad and Pas Abad Santos, a big exhibition uh, at the Met uh, uh, Museum during that time. So, and then after a while, uh, since I was just a volunteer, uh, I, I went working and then I came back to the museum properties around 2003 or 2004. So I again volunteered. So I did not start it as, as, as a worker. I, it, it was a pure uh, volunteer job where I got no uh, monetary uh, uh, um, you know, a benefit from any of those institutions. So I I went to Vargas Museum where Ana Labrador, Dr. Ana Labrador was the curator back then. And then I, I again uh, presented myself as a, uh, can I volunteer as a museum worker? I just want to, you know, know that uh, I want to experience how exhibitions are made. And of course, then yeah, I got in, she, she took me as a volunteer and she assigned me in the collections of the Vargas to help or assist in the uh, collection care documentation of the Vargas Museum collection. So, dun ako naging ano. And then after that, ahaba. <laughs> so, and then uh, Dr. Labrador was the one who, who you know, encouraged me to, to, to take further studies in, in using studies. Uh, during that time, so and then after Vargas Museum, uh, I went into uh, I, I were like uh, six to eight months. We were in Culion Museum in Palawan, Culion Island, to help uh, refurbish or you know establish the museum and archives in Palawan with uh, Professor Ricky Kunzala, who is now connected with the Michigan uh, 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 University. It's now Michigan University. Then of course, after that, I went into commercial galleries. So that's where I started uh, uh, knowing about the nitty gritty of the how art works or how this uh, the whole art scene is uh, in motion from selling to uh, non-selling shows. And then that's also where I learned how uh, exhibition, learn more how exhibitions are presented, not in a museum setting, but in you know gallery and, and, and other space setting. So that's under Silvana Diaz. And then of course eventually I went into the NCCA. And yeah, to now. <laughs> so that's that's the history of how I got into uh, on, on curation thing and exhibition organized in okay. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I 
we apologize for the other anons here who asked some questions because we have a limited amount of time. So maybe we can not be, ano, maybe you can message her person. I don't know. Pero um, we will now proceed with the certificate. Okay. So once again, thank you, Miss Mimi, for the fruitful webinar on art curation. Okay. And to our participants who sent their questions, uh, we regretfully are unable to tackle them all because of our limited time. So likewise, to award our speaker with the certificate of appreciation, may I call on our assistant dean for research and advanced studies in the College of Liberal Arts and the chair of the organizing committee of the 14th DLSU Arts Congress, Dr. Dennis Trinidad. Okay, thank you very much, Josh. Um, on behalf of the organizing committee, uh, I would like to uh, extend our deepest appreciation to uh, Ms. Mimi Santos uh, for her very enlightening uh, uh, talk on curation in art and art in curation. Actually, uh, personally, I enjoy uh, viewing uh, exhibitions whenever there is an opportunity, you know, but uh, after your talk, I became more appreciative of the entire process. Uh, I appreciate uh, how the concept is done, uh, the, uh, the choice of the materials uh, to be exhibited, and of course, the storytelling and the effort you know, behind those uh, artworks you know, to be exhibited. So um, I would like to award this uh, certificate of uh, appreciation. Um, if, I, if I may be allowed not to share screen so that I can uh, show the uh, citation of the certificate of uh, appreciation. Uh, the screen sharing is disabled. Josh. Ayan, okay, so. So again, uh, on behalf of the uh, organizing committee, let me uh, read the citation uh, that we will award to uh, Ms. Mimi Santos, uh, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Research and Innovation, uh, De La Salle University hereby awards this certificate of appreciation uh, to Ms. Hermelina Mimi Santos as a token of our sincere gratitude for her invaluable contribution to the 14th DLSU Arts Congress as resource person in a webinar on curation in art, art in curation, held on the 9th of March, 2021. Signed yours truly, uh, Chair of the Arts Congress Committee, CLA Assistant Dean for Research and Advanced Studies, and Dr. Raymond Gerard Artan, our Vice Chancellor for Research and Innovation. So please join me in thanking Ms. Mimi Santos no, by sending her a uh, heart icon or a thumbs up or a clap icon uh, on your uh, Zoom. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Mimi. We appreciate uh, your presence and your contribution. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Trinidad. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, thanks for gracing the DLSU Arts Congress. Uh, again, uh, thank you, Dr. Dennis, and thank you, Ms. Mimi. Uh, join us for our next events today. Huh? Up next is another webinar on art demonstration, Shadow Play, which will be held at 11 a.m. And the next, and thank you everyone for joining us in this webinar. This is the 14th DLSU Arts Congress, Pandemic, Resilience, and the Arts, Animo Lasal. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh.